Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bard, and I am so happy to share with you my latest 3D mixed media oil painting, Lady Earth. I'm going to create this entire work of art from start to finish for you today. And if you have any questions about some of my processes, check around below for links because I've got detailed videos on how I create a lot of these effects. If you enjoy my painting today, please give this video a thumbs up so more people will see it. Make sure you're subscribed and ding the notification bell so you're back every single week for all the best fine art tutorials and art biz advice. If you're not familiar with how to transfer your own freehand drawings or even photographs to canvas or linen for painting, check out this video I've got. It's actually quite easy. I've got three different methods for you. Now I seriously love mixing paint, skin tones in particular. There's just something about having to be so delicate and precise and getting such a lovely range of warm and cool that I'm just a big fan of. Obviously I have sort of an extended palette. I actually wind up using a lot of this teal and blue, especially in darker skin tones. But if you would like to see how to mix your own skin tones in a much simpler palette, I've got a video for that too. When deciding on the background colors I wanted to use, I tried to think about the tones that would be in the foreground. And since I'm painting Toy, a lovely black woman, there's going to be a lot of orange and warm jewel tones in her skin tone. So I thought a complementary color being blue would be a nice background. I also wanted it to be sort of a brighter background. Often I do dark backgrounds, but in this case, because her hair was so dark and I knew that she had on a dark piece of clothing and some of the leaves were gonna be dark, I decided to do a brighter background today. So I went ahead and popped in this bright blue. That also gave a really nice contrast with her slightly out of focus dreadlocks that are supposed to be showing that they are behind the foreground ones. Um, this is something I've done a few times creating uh, background images a little out of focus and front or foreground images in more clear and bright focus. And I really love the effect that this gives my paintings when I get it done effectively. Another reason I wanted to go with this icy cool blue background was to really give a nice warm cool compliment to these fiery orange red dreads. I just love Toy's bright dreads. They look like little flaming burning embers just jumping right off my linen. As you may know from some of my past paintings and drawings, I tend to use a lot of people that I know as my muses and models, and Toy is no different. She and I actually have been following each other on Instagram for a few years now, I feel like at least three or four years, and she's just always been this super sweet, encouraging voice. She's not the most active person on social media, which I think is probably healthy for her mindset, <laughs> healthy for all of our mindsets, really. Um, but when she is on there, she's just always very kind and positive, and she's just really a radiating soul. I've enjoyed following along with Toy. She's got a really sweet boyfriend. They obviously love each other very much, and she's just... One of these people that you can tell has a big personality, but is also a little bit probably reserved when you first meet her. But I just love that. I love the type of people that seem to blossom as you get to know them. And I just feel very fortunate to have folks like this, that even though we haven't met in person, we seem to share this sort of creative spark and inspired connection so it's like you have these conversations with people and you get to know them on this very deeply personal level and I sincerely hope one day Toy and I get to meet each other in person and give each other a big hug and do go do something fun together maybe go to an art show or something I'm not sure um it's not the first person that I have met through Instagram and asked to model for a painting for me or asked for asked to use a photo of theirs and then have subsequently become really close friends. 
So it's a wonderful way to be able to meet people, reaching out through your artwork. And especially during this pandemic time, it's not exactly easy for me to meet up with a bunch of friends or models and take my own photos. So being able to find such lovely, inspiring people that allow me to use their really clear and exuberant selfies is super helpful all around. And actually, speaking of the pandemic, which I promise not to talk about for long because I know we're all a little weary of, but I am so curious as to how all my lovely YouTube artist friends have been getting on. I guess it's been a little less than a year since I first posted my coronavirus and artist video trying to give my fellow artists a few suggestions on how to brave this crazy COVID-19 world. Of course, that was back in like April or something, 2020, when it was still very new and we thought the world might just be shut down for a couple of months. Um, but I'm so curious, as I said, I've definitely had to change where um, I'm finding, you know, sourcing my models and photos and stuff a bit. And um, I've actually moved. I'm not traveling so much these days. Duh, nobody is. And I actually moved for a really awesome artsy job opportunity um, that probably maybe or may or may or may not have come upon had this pandemic not come up. So I feel like there's been a lot of creatives that, of course, have suffered. Of course. I mean, I think we've all suffered something. But I think that there's also been a lot of very interesting creative outlets that have come out of this time. Um, so if anybody would like to share anything that has maybe been like a positive for their business to come out or a positive for their art practice to come out in the comments, I would really be super interested in hearing about that. Maybe even we could do another coronavirus video if people want to collaborate or something um, one year later, you know, that could be a fun idea. So definitely drop me a comment down below and let me know what's been going on in your studio and art practice and art business. If it has sort of leveled out or if you've actually found some improvements in having all this insane amount of time in your studio, I will be very interested to hear how other people are getting on. And I really hope that you're getting on well. I really, really do. Speaking of just getting to know someone through a screen, I think maybe that's one of the reasons why I love painting portraits so much is that you get to know this person in a very deep and personal way, whether or not you've actually met them in person. Um, I used to do professional portrait drawings uh, more often, like custom portraits for people. And um, even doing my paintings too, actually, I guess, it's a really surreal experience when you've spent hours or days or weeks, especially, creating a portrait drawing or painting you know really trying to get someone's likeness as close as you possibly can and you really get to know the ins and outs you know the curves the musculature of their face and everything and then to meet that person in real life is it's just it's a very very surreal experience I love it it's really crazy um there was one time in particular I can remember doing a portrait drawing for a couple and the girl I knew, she was a fellow artist and we were actually doing an art trade so she did some pictures of me and I did a portrait of her and her boyfriend and I was able to actually present it to them framed. She knew it was coming but it was a total surprise for him and so just that whole experience of not only meeting someone that I had drawn and that was the only way I knew him, but to actually be able to present it to him as a surprise, like it was just such, um, such a funny experience. And he's looking at me like, whoa, and I'm looking at him like, gosh, I feel like I know you so well and he already. So uh, yeah, there's, um, there's something very special about 
capturing somebody's likeness. Um, you know, it kind of harkens back to, um, you know, historically in art, um, portraits were traditionally made, you know, way back in the day by, you know, the Etruscans and the ancient Greeks and things like that. They originally, originally had started um, as a way of commemorating people you know, either people that had passed away or were about to pass away, and they were always done basically in super idealized ways, like you wouldn't really paint or draw or sculpt someone that was elderly or old, you would only want to do it of them in their, like, youth and pristine, you know, maximum amount of strength and, you know, perceived beauty or whatever. Um, So it's just very interesting how portraits have come along, you know, from these very stylized, you know, sarcophagi paintings and sculptures to the extreme realism of the high renaissance mannerists and Dutch painters and then back down to the simplicity of the impressionists then to some of the more, you know, almost disfigured and grotesque shapes that Picasso would come about to now we've kind of come around and are really enjoying you know, getting real likenesses once again um, with our fine art. So it's just fun. You know, it's fun to think about the history of what we're creating. I actually am huge on art history. I absolutely love it. I love to learn about it. I love to study it, teach it, all that good stuff. Um, And I think there's something really amazing to be said about looking at what people have created in the past in order to help inspire us to create more like it and more different in the future. I've actually been looking to historical art references for naming some of my recent works. I did a painting called Primavera recently after a Botticelli painting. And now Toy, this lovely painting, I've decided to call Lady Earth. And that is after a little bit of research I did looking at some of the past goddesses of past civilizations, trying to find out sort of alternates to mother ner- mother nature or mother earth i know we as americans we're used to the term mother nature but i'm trying to find some other ways that some other past cultures have embodied this same idea of an earth goddess and earth mother and i found um, one called ninsar and she is the ancient sumerian goddess of plants and her name translates to Lady Earth, which I just thought was absolutely perfect. Perfect for this painting. Just wait till you see in the end when I give her all her beautiful fern goddess accoutrement and you will see that Toy is definitely Lady Earth. I love the natural beauty that she has in real life as well as in this portrait. I don't think she's got on any makeup in this portrait. Not that there's anything wrong with makeup, but I definitely love when my muses just have their pure bare skin for my paintbrush to appreciate. So cheers to you, Lady Earth. Definitely toy fits the bill for sure. I guess if I was going to give any blanket advice about painting portraits to other folks, I would probably say two things. Well, three things. One, first one, start with a really, really good drawing. If your drawing isn't super accurate before you even lay in any paint, then your portrait, your painting is never going to be accurate. So you need to start with a strong drawing. Then I would say make sure to mix up a large variety of your skin tones. Make sure you have plenty of different hues and values so that they're right there on the ready so that you're not skimping or kind of cutting corners or whatever. I know sometimes when I start to get going, the last thing I want to do is like have to make up, mix up a bunch of new paint. So I like to have a whole bunch of paint ready right off the get-go. And then the last thing I would say is... Of course, take your time, you know, like with any good art project, but be intentional with your brush strokes. The thing is, is that sometimes we think that we need to be 
super blended and smooth when we're creating skin tones and things like that, but that can actually be sort of overkill. The best thing you can do is to sort of make your brush strokes trace along the contours of their of their face. Whatever you are doing, whatever area you are highlighting, if it's the cheek, if it's the nose, if it's the lip, pay attention to the actual contours, the actual shape of that physical thing and make your brush strokes sort of match accordingly. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense with what I'm doing here. You can see me actually tracing the outlines and and going with the motion of the skin and muscle as I paint. But if you can take away any sort of advice from this painting or portrait paintings in general, hopefully those three tips will help you. Once my painting is complete and fully dried and I have built a shadow box from around it, then the magic really starts to happen. I love to add in different found objects. This is some old broken jewelry I had. These ferns are ferns that I collected in both Hawaii as well as Florida and press and save them. And I just love actually going through my, all my little collections of dried things, seeing which is going to fit, seeing what's going to complement my figures the most. It's honestly hard for me to choose which I like more, the painting or the collaging. The most nerve-wracking part, of course, is easily the resin pouring process. I mean, this is the point when I am completely finished painting and laying in everything, and this is the point when everything can go horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Whew, and somehow she didn't. <laughs> Thank you so much for... My, being such a wonderful model and muse toy and thank you folks for joining me today on creating this piece if you're curious yes she actually is available for sale in my art shop as well as a number of other original oil paintings stickers and other fun Kaylee Bird art stuff you can find that link down below and if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out this playlist right here of a bunch of other 3D oil paintings I have created over the last couple of years Make sure you're subscribed, ding the notification bell, and come back every single week for all the best fine art tutorials and art biz advice. I'll see you guys soon.